Rebuilding a Stuart Double 10 V steam engine part 12. A problem with a baseboard that I made in my Stuart steam plant series, fitting the top cylinder covers and plugging holes in the steam chests. With both of the cylinders bolted to the engine, I thought it was a good idea to check that the pre-made exhaust pipe fits on the flanges, and indeed it does. After repairing the piece of cast iron on the top of one of the standards, the build is now back on track. Not everything in my life is good though. This is the baseboard I made in my Making a Stuart Model Steam Plant series. And what's wrong with it? Well, it needs sanding down, obviously. But what's really wrong with it is, the baseboard has warped. You can see when I put a straight edge against it, it's not exactly straight. This wood that I bought from a local DIY outlet is a piece of pine. And I have to mention at this stage that pine does not seem to be very good for steam engine baseboards. When I think about it, I don't know why I bought this pine board, it was just convenient at the time. In the end, I went to a company called Howarth Timber and bought this piece of plywood. And I didn't just buy this piece, because I had to buy a full 8x4 sheet of plywood. Thankfully, the company cut the plywood into manageable pieces. And in this clip, I'm marking it out, because I'm going to cut it to the size that I need it to be. Just for a change I'm going to let you take a look at my very messy workbench. I make no apologies for this. This is the way I work. It's sort of disorganised chaos. But I like it that way. Back now to this series. I've fitted the top cylinder covers to the engine. And as I run it using my electric drill and put my fingers over the ports, you can hear the tone change. The piston seals are 100% and this engine is going to work well and be very powerful. It's nearly time to fit the studs which hold the steam chest and the steam chest cover in place. Before I do that though, I need to give the steam chests some attention. These steam chests have been in the tumbler polisher for a while, and here I'm removing the last trace of the media that finds its way into every possible hole. The polishing media that I use is bits of ground up walnut shells, and it seems to do the trick, although it really hasn't cleaned these up very well. I don't think I'd bother putting a steam cylinder into this media because it would get stuck in every port. What I'm doing here is a test fit of the steam chests on the engine. This is just one of them. What's most important is that I find the pairs that match up. So when I found them, I wrote on them. The letter R means for rear and the other one has a letter F on it. That of course stands for front. In this clip you can clearly see the red o-rings that are filling the gap between the threads and the main body of the exhaust flanges. And one viewer wrote in and said that he didn't like them. So just for you Bruce I'm going to change them for black ones. But not yet because there's lots to do. Things like this. I'm drilling the holes a little bit deeper for the studs on the steam chest. Although in this clip I'm not doing it for real, I'm just showing the principle. When I do it for real, my hands get in the way. I'm drilling all four holes into the cylinder a bit deeper, and then I'm going to thread them using a tap like this. I'm using a plug tap that will get right to the bottom of the hole. On this engine, I'm going to fit these studs into the cylinder block using a Loctite retainer, so they all stick out the same amount. In an ideal world, I would be able to screw these studs all the way in up to the shoulder, but when I tried that and fitted the steam chest and cover, there wasn't really enough room for the nuts on the outside. In the same manner that the holes in the cylinder cover and the standards were a bit tight, the holes in the steam chest and the steam chest covers are also very tight on these studs. They did fit together, but they were too tight, and this one doesn't look perfectly square. So in the fullness of time, I will drill out these holes to give me a bit of clearance. For a bit of a diversion, I thought it would be a good idea to remove the bits of polishing machine media, which were stuck in any gaps in the eccentric straps. I'm going to have to do something about the original butchered holes that were drilled in the steam chests. Here I'm contemplating the best method to use. Do I use a piece of studding like this, or should I just use a couple of bolts? Whatever I use is going to be fixed in place with Loctite 603. In the end, in my box of 6BA bolts, I found two long ones. So the sequence was to apply the Loctite 638 to the hole and screw in the bolt, then chop it off. 
followed by using my one inch belt sander to clean off the end of the bolt that I'd just chopped off and then a bit more Loctite 603 and screw the bolt in again. And once I chopped off the bolt for a second time, the holes in the steam chest were plugged. I repeated the entire process on the steam chest at the other side. And now the steam chests definitely look better. You can still see some marks where the holes have been. Generally speaking, you do get this effect when you plug holes using a thread. But now both of the steam chests look a lot better. Looking in a box of very old Stuart parts, I found these well-made driver blocks for the slide valves. So instead of making new ones, I will use these. Both of these are far better than the originals that were fitted to this engine that sloped. The job is now rapidly approaching the time when I have a kit of pre-machined parts that just need assembly. But there's still a way to go to finish this job and get the engine to run properly. And that's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.